Pampa, Texas, a quiet town of 18,000 people in the heart of the Texas Panhandle, was shocked on a cold New Year's Eve in 1993 when police responded to a call and discovered a gruesome scene on Campbell Avenue. 40-year-old Twyla Busby had been bludgeoned to death and her two sons, Randy Busby and Elwin Kaler, stabbed. 31-year-old Henry Skinner was found blocks away, his clothing spattered with blood that DNA tests linked to the murder scene. He was arrested and charged with the slayings of Busby, his live-in girlfriend, and her two sons. Skinner was convicted of the killings and received the death penalty in March of 1995. After 15 years and repeated appeals at the state and federal levels, Skinner still maintains his innocence. Globe News reporter Janelle Steckline recently interviewed Skinner at the state prison in Livingston, where he remains on death row. On March 24th, moments before a scheduled execution, the Supreme Court granted Henry Watkins Skinner a stay in order to consider his latest petition. At issue is Skinner's request for additional DNA testing that he claims will exonerate him. What follows is my interview with Skinner in two parts. In the first segment, I ask him to recount his version of the murders and about the DNA testing he's requesting. The second segment discusses his previous charges, how he felt coming so close to death and life on death row. What I know about what happened that night is put together, like I guess you'd say cobbled together from flashes of memory, from other witnesses' testimony, from the police reports, from the uh, trial evidence. I wasn't present for part of what happened, so I don't know. What part weren't you present for? Um, <clears throat> whatever had happened, uh, the oldest son woke me up off the couch and got me out of the house. But everything, it was already done by then. He was mortally wounded, but I didn't know it. We went out the back door to the alley. I fell down. I couldn't get up. I passed out again. I woke up. I was freezing cold. He wasn't there, and so I got up and staggered down the alley. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't walk. I pretty much just crawled, crawled and leaned forward until I fell and held on the fence post and gas meters and garbage cans and whatever was back there until I drug myself down the alley. You think about it, it sounds pretty um, unrealistic. You're laying on the couch, your girlfriend's getting murdered on the floor like near you, and then the two boys are getting stabbed to death in the house too, and you don't hear anything. Yeah, well... <clears throat> the state star witness, Howard Mitchell, testified that when he came over to pick us up um, that I was completely unresponsive and comatose, that he grabbed me by the arm and jerked on my arm real hard until he pulled my torso completely off the couch. But I had a near lethal dose of codeine in my system that night and I'm allergic to it. How, why did you take it then? I didn't take it. How did you get it in you? I always thought that someone put that stuff in my drink, but I'm thinking what happened was is that I picked up Twyla's cup thinking it was mine and drank out of her cup. But look at this. Can you see this scar? Yeah. You see how bad that is? Yeah. I'm right-handed. Mm -hmm. His hand was injured in a shop accident six months before the murder. Well, five months before the murders in July. Okay. And at the time of these murders, my hand was so messed up, I couldn't hardly hold a toothbrush or a hairbrush. You know, I could not have held those murder weapons and used them the way they were used if my life had depended on it, even if I were stone cold sober. You know, you're trying to get a lot of this DNA evidence tested, and um, they did test four pieces initially for your trial, correct? And you're, they yeah. found your blo the both boys' blood on your, your no. clothes. No, no. Randy's blood was found nowhere on me. None of the forensic evidence in this case is tied to me in any way whatsoever. The only, the only stains tested on my clothes were contact transfers. And the state's experts conceded at trial that that did not prove that it was consistent with my claim of actual innocence because it proved only that I came into contact with one of the victims or a surface upon which they deposited blood after they were bloody. So that's after the fact, blood. All my criminal appeals are exhausted. This is a civil suit. This is novel. It's never been done before. If it weren't for this, I'd be dead. So if we were relying on the criminal justice system, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. Ten years ago, they could have turned this evidence over and tested it. I'd be dead or I'd be home by now. One of the two.